So training, repetition, and character building. Character building and refinement don't happen overnight. So you need, you know, basically uh, a lot of training and a lot of practice and a lot of patience. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, al khayru aada wa sharru lajaja wa man yurda lahu bihi khayran yafaqihu fi al-deen. So al khayru aada means what? Good deeds or good doing is a habit. It requires practice. It comes with practice. Remember, becoming forbearing is by practice. All good deeds just need practice. And uh, you should never give up. You should never give up until it becomes second nature. And then it becomes easy. And some of the, some of the predecessors said that we, we struggled through the night prayers for one year and then we enjoyed it for 20 years. One year of struggle, yeah. But if, if, you, if you go through it, if you just uh, basically endure the, the struggle for, for one year, you may enjoy the night prayers for 20 years uh, or for the rest of your life, whatever that may be. Uh, so practice is, is extremely important. And then don't get tired of repeating yourself. Repeat yourself. You didn't get it from the first time when you were a child. You needed the repetition. So just be mindful of this. Teaching in increments also is important because the children have a shorter lifespan. Even adults nowadays have no lifespan. I'm sorry, the shorter attention span. Uh, <laughs> you guys are doing well because I'm a very monotonous speaker. And if you are able to actually stay here for, for two hours now, then you're doing quite well. Uh, but, uh, but children have a shorter attention span than adults. Even adults, the Prophet ﷺ used to teach them in increments. And that's why you have Jabir ibn Samura saying, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يُطِيلُ الْمَوْعِذَةَ تَيَوْمَ الْجُمُعَةَ إِنَّمَا هِيَا كَلِمَاتٌ يَسِيرًا The Prophet ﷺ did not elongate his exhortations on Fridays, but kept it concise, just a few words. And teaching by storytelling is also very important. Teaching by storytelling is indirect, which makes it more effective and enjoyable. And as I said to you before, that teaching by storytelling is extremely important because you do want them to have better role models than you. You do want to be the best role model they can have in front of them, but you do want them to always remember that there are greater role models that they should look up to. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, the rest of the Prophets, the companions radiallahu anhu. لقد كان في قصة في قصصهم عبرة ليولي الألباب ما كان حديث يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين ذيه تفصيل كل شيء وهذا ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون. Indeed, in their stories, there is a lesson for men of understanding. It's not a forged statement, but a confirmation of Allah's existing books, which were before, which were before it, and a detailed explanation of everything, and a guide and a mercy for the people who believe. One, one third of the Quran is stories. One third of the Quran stories. There is a wisdom in that. People learn by, this is called instantiation of values, instantiation of facts. And people learn through uh, these stories. Uh, and, you know, so, so, so the, collective, the collective consciousness of Muslims, where, where does it come from? Mainly from the stories of the Quran. Our collective consciousness is actually formed and shaped mainly by the stories of the Quran. Uh, so every time your child says, I have a question, that's an opportunity. And it would be such a waste to, uh, or such a loss to waste it, such a waste to lose it. A child's question is, is a prime opportunity for education. So the Salaf allowed their students to ask questions and were not annoyed by this. So you know Hamad, rahimahullah, who was the, the, the Sheikh of Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. And uh, Imam Abu Hanifa had, had many questions uh, for Hamad. And he, that, that never annoyed Hamad. In fact, he praised them for, for the per persistent questioning. So if a question requires an age-appropriate answer, never lie to your child or deny them an answer. 
and instead, like our Prophet ﷺ, use parables, allegories, or symbols. Use age-appropriate language to explain age-inappropriate <laughs> concepts uh, in an age-appropriate uh, language. So using symbolic speech and parables also teaches your child the concept of haya. Haya is the what of Islam, signature characteristic, hallmark of Islam. Uh, every religion has its own signature, signature characteristic, and the signature characteristic of Islam is haya, best translated as modesty. But it is a, a, a defect, like an insufficient translation. It's an optimal translation, but it is the best. So the moral of Islam, as the Prophet ﷺ called it. However, modesty should not be an obstacle before learner, learning. And you all know the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha when, when she said that may Allah have mercy on the women of Al-Ansar, modesty never prevented them from learning. Okay, so you can always find ways to teach without compromising modesty. So I encourage observation, contemplation, and creativity. 